today on Running to Him. Let's see how God can compel us into being instruments of change in our world. Today we will read Mark chapter 1 and 2 and concentrate on chapter 1 verses 9 through 13. Mark 1, 9 through 13 says, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open up in the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice out of heaven said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Immediately the spirit impelled him to go out to the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels were ministering to him. Now, the story of Jesus being taken into the wilderness helps us to understand how God can prepare us for our future ministry. This story is found in all three synoptic Gospels, Matthew and Luke being the longer version of the story. Mark's Gospel uses the word translated immediately 40 different times, and its use gives us insight into the way that Mark writes. His Gospel is fast-paced and to the point. He doesn't stay in one place for a very long time. He tells the story, and he moves on. So let's also look at the word translated as impelled in the New American Standard Bible. Other Bibles translate the word as drove, that was the Net Bible, sent, NIV 84, and compelled in the New Living Translation. The most common translation is the word drove. And the place where Jesus was driven might also be important for us. He was driven into the wilderness, a place of loneliness and solitude. But let's return for a moment to Jesus being driven into the desert. We are immediately faced with the question, can we be driven by God to do something? And the answer is yes, but it may not be as dramatic as spending 40 days in the wilderness. I'm reminded of the story of Jonathan Edwards. He was a pastor in New England during the middle and late 18th century. His sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, was so powerful that it caused many in his congregation to grab the pillars in the church, thinking that the floor was about to swallow them up, casting them into hell. But the more the backstory is even more impressive than the story itself. For a while, before the sermon was preached, there was a small revival of sorts in the colonies, now known as New England. The movement wasn't well defined, but Edwards began to have some very strong impressions that God wanted to use him. He felt compelled to fast three days before he delivered the sermon. And his constant prayer was for God to give him New England. His sermon that Sunday was the catalyst God used to drive New England into the first religious awakening in what became the United States. And it lasted until the end of the Revolutionary War. In Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10, Luke writes, They passed through the Phrygian and Galatian region, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And after they came to Mysia, they were trying to go to Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not permit them. And passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, A man of Macedonia was standing and appealing to him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, he immediately sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Note that Paul and Silas wanted to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit wouldn't let them. This is God working in reverse by not allowing a certain action. So what are we to do in our walk with Christ? How can we be compelled to do something in God's will? First, we need to repent and confess our weaknesses. Second, we should pray for God to give us a vision of what he wants us to do. And finally, we need to let the Holy Spirit push us into action. Let's see how God can compel us into being instruments of change in our world. Thank you for listening. We pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you. We would love to hear from you. You can use either Facebook or YouTube to like, subscribe, share, and tell others about us. If you would like to contact us, you can reach me at 
phineasjacobus at runningtohim.net.